Hey there, son of peeps. How's it going? Today, we're going to go over a case of a hand laceration. So the laceration went in through here in the hypothenar region and came out through here. All right. So obviously, the ER wanted to check the flexor tendons, make sure that they were intact. And for the most part, they were. So beginning, it was in the left hand. Uh, the, pa the patient had a tegaderm patch. So that was kind of obscuring the, the sound waves a little bit. You see, I started, I used the linear uh, 9, the linear 15, and the linear 24 megahertz. So I started with that. Here's a flexor tendon. Not very, you know, clear because of the tegaderm patch. Then I changed to the 20, uh, 24 megahertz probe, brought it down to 18 megahertz. Here you can see it very clear. Here's a, the flexor tendon of the fifth digit, so the pinky which is where the wound was closest to. So it's good. There's no laceration there. So just lateral to that, which would be the medial hand in anatomic position, you can start to see where there's a laceration already right there. This is mostly in the subcutaneous fat. You see a little bit of fluid there and then the laceration there, or no laceration. <laughs> color Doppler, no flow. It's good to do color Doppler in the area. Check the palmar arteries. Make sure there's no palmar artery injury or pseudoaneurysm which there wasn't. All right, so then transverse, you can see the, the two flexor tendons there, the fourth and fifth, so transverse around right here. And then bilateral, showing the comparison, flexor tendons are intact on both sides. Naturally, they'd be intact on the other side because there's no injury there. Let's look at the clips. So here's a clip side by side of the flexor tendons on both hands of the fifth digits. And you can see the motion there, pretty uh, intact, no injury there. So then I continued to the medial segment and started to wrap around to see if there was any damage in the hyperthenar muscles. This is the ab uh, abductor digiti minimi, minimi. Uh, I like to say ab abductor digiti minimi. I don't know, whatever. So here you can see that there's some pretty extensive tissue damage to the muscle. So you can see all this is the laceration. Here's a little hematoma. I like to, when there's something very, uh, you know, weird shaped, I like to, to trace it to show the, you know, pretty much the outline for the radiologist. So you can see where the tract is from the, the wound and then the fluid collection, which is most likely a hematoma blood collection. Every time you see a collection, put color Doppler, make sure it's not a pseudoaneurysm or the other type of vascular structure. Here's a side by side. You see the left and the right. See how the right is nice and intact. And the left is not. You see the sever right there. See the muscles retracted on both ways. And in transverse, kind of following this trajectory right here. And then the right for comparison. So let's look at the clips. That's where you really see the extent of the damage in the, the dynamic, dynamic views. So here's just a sweep through from lateral to medial. There you can see the, the defect right there and the fluid collection there. Now here's with abduction of the pinky. Patient was not able to perform this himself. So you can see the separation of the two muscles there very clearly. And this is again with the 24 megahertz transducer on the Logic E10. Just fantastic imaging. You can see here the fluid is a little echogenic, so there's blood there as well. As it starts to clot, you know the blood gets a little bit more, a little bit more echogenic. And here's a clip with the laceration and the little blood collection, the little hematoma. So very clearly you can see the muscle is pretty much a full thickness laceration. So pretty impressive findings. And it's also good to, you know, scan more than the area you think, you know, they're all oh, really worried about the tendons, but so the tendons are here, but you know, there's an exit wound here. So, you know, look at both sides. I had a patient, um, same weekend or same week, that they had some swelling in the leg and they're worried about the lateral portion of the shin, soft tissue exam, there was some edema, nothing crazy. But I went to the medial section and there you can see the superficial veins uh, were, were clotted. Had I just focused on the uh, lateral sections, what they told me to, they like, no, just look at the lateral segment of the leg and I compared both sides. Had I not gone to the medial section, I wouldn't have seen that superficial facial vein thrombosis, which it's not as serious as DVT, but still it's good to know what's causing the issue, right? And then the last clip is just a tendon. So as you move the tendon, you see it moves very clearly. 
this is a very interesting case. I wanted to show you the how well the 24 megahertz transducer in the Logic E10 can image. You can see the fascial planes. You can see the, the the subcutaneous fat. You can even see the ridges of the of the prints. You know, like the fingerprints and stuff like that. You can see the ridges in the in the dermis. In the that's amazing. So yeah, I just wanted to go over that case to show you uh, the capabilities of the 24 megahertz transducer. And kind of like a technique, you know, this is not a real musculoskeletal exam. It's more of a limited soft tissue exam to assess the fat, the muscle, the tendons. And if there was any vascular damage, also assess that as well. Um, patients didn't have an MRI, so, but they were referred to a hand surgeon. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, stay tuned for more. Thank you. Bye.